Lovely. Oh, good to be on the mat. So, um, today's class, we're going to continue with the Hara Centre, or Hara, depending on North or South. Uh, I've mucked about. Now, I just want you to all double check that your microphones are off, just so you don't pop up mask on somebody else's screen, which is always a bonus. I think most of you are all on off. I can see the little red boxes with my minimal sight from that distance. Uh, Linda's good. Hi, Linda. Yeah, if your microphone's off, you won't pop up on anybody else's screen. Um, we have a, a great day, which is very apt with what we're doing with our yoga. We're about centering in. Um, let's have a little quote. Quote starts off When you find your centre, you will not be drawn to someone else's storm. Instead, they will be drawn to your peace. I like that, it's rather nice, isn't it? So today, we're gonna to come to our center to find our peace, our calm. With a day like this that we have today, and when we do have these dark, gray, oppressive days, it can be quite easy to let the, the weight of the world sit on our shoulders and allow frustration to take over because we can't be outside, be creative, move freely. So today's about sensing it because the peace you require isn't from anything external around you, it's internal. I've also, from yesterday's class, took into consideration that it's too early in this sequence of classes to start getting wrist heavy. Okay, so just for instance, if we were to ramp it up a little bit on the Tuesday and start giving it sort of you know, your full core plank business, and we're giving it all of this and all of that welly and warm and raw and all of this and all of that, that the wrists are going to be massively fatigued by the end of the week and we saw in tender. So that was a bit of a thought process, how we can work the hour and the core in a nice strengthening, rebooting, build the battery power up way without impacting the wrists. Do you get me? Give me a thumbs up if you get me. Yeah. So, side effect is we're going to be using the forearms, which is good because we strengthened that kinetic chain all last week. Oh, Carrie's in. Carrie's late. We're getting into old habits, aren't we? Um, Alex, I know you're here this, but Alex, uh, Carrie's just walked in. Hi, Carrie. She's going to dance across the screen for us all. For Lou, who doesn't know this, Carrie's a regular at the yoga class and she likes to dance around the room in a kind of ABBA style when she enters. And it's always very welcomed. Yay! Thinking of your ABBA styles, lady. So the issue, by avoiding the wrist work in this class today, there's still going to be some, but we're not going to fatigue it. We will be working off the forearms. That actually makes working into the core a little bit more intense. So what am I gonna say? If you feel you've got tension, not tone, tension, ah, uh, tone, mm, yeah, tension, ah, uh, tone, mm, okay, visual representation. I want you to go to Charles Pose. And as always, wait for the next round or wait for the next leg and groove on it. If you're going to be doing the class every day this week, you've got tomorrow. Okay, so let's begin in the seated upright position. You're at home, if you're feeling a bit today, done the hard part, you've made it. You've turned on your gubbins, you've rolled out your mat, you've decided to get here, you've not had to put your makeup on or get some matching outfit. Oh, otherwise, yeah, I'll be wearing this outfit all week. It's not <laughs> because I can't be asked to do the laundry because I've got a man who does my laundry for me. It's marvellous. It's because when I put these together, if I've got the same outfit on, it's easy for me to edit them into a block and I don't have to go looking through it. So that's going to stay the same and this is going to stay the same. Yeah? It's just so, just so when it comes to me <laughs> putting them on the website, it gets easier. So sitting nice and tall in whatever place, we're going to do three styles of breathing okay number one we're going to practice thoracic breathing so sit nice and tall take a full breath in 
As you exhale, draw the navel towards the spine. Think of it going slightly upwards and think of the pelvic floor. And then breathe to the top of the chest. Side of the ribs. Strong breathing. But it's a tone. Start to create heat. And then relax. You come back to normal centre breath. So that creates a bit of heat. That's that Ashtanga style of breathing, which has benefits, particularly when doing the power yoga. It's not what we're doing today, though. Mm -mm. We're rebooting the batteries, we're not draining them. Okay. Then we've got our diaphragm breathing with the rounded belly. So Belly's coming out today. I've got a big yellow band, which is great for seeing what, what my belly's doing. Sit nice and tall. It's like I'm going to get a tan, isn't it? Tanning. Sit nice and tall. We're going to put the hands on the belly and we're going to inhale into the belly. Exhale, navel to spine, and just gently guide the belly in with the hands. Inhale. Hold, exhale, hold, sit a little taller, inhale, exhale, inhale, fill the belly like a balloon, exhale, navel towards spine and slightly upward so it takes the pelvic floor, release the hands, continue, inhale, And exhale. Sit taller. Inhale. And exhale. Come back to normal breathing. So what we're creating here is samadhi, which is concentration with the breath, connecting with the body. Okay, here's our new playful one. Here's my new discovery in my world of breathing. It's the howl of breath. Yesterday I found a video of a Japanese flute player. It's not what some of you are thinking. It wasn't the pink oboe. Shame on some of you. I will edit that statement out. However, the Japanese like Lou's laughing, I can see it. Playing the flute. On his exhalation, playing the flute, played his notes, his exhalation was one full minute. The exhalation, it was phenomenal, mind-blowing. So, but what he was doing was this. He was inhaling, as we did yesterday, filling the belly like a balloon. And I'm going to come to the side of you. I've been practicing this load, and it really is a good concentration. So he was inhaling, inhaling. And as he was exhaling, So I'm not sucking in, but it's drawing in. So we'll be doing that on all fours, but let's have a little go cross-legged. Don't get into dismay if it doesn't click in at first. I spent all day yesterday mucking about in this breath while washing up, while doing all sorts of things. Not playing the flute though. Playing the flutes for the weekends only, people. Thank you. Inhale. And as you exhale, keep the lower belly relaxed. Let the diaphragm lift, hold, inhale, fill into the belly. I'm finding myself putting my right hand two inches below the navel, exhale. And taking the breath down into the root of me, into the hara, inhale. It's where life begins, where the umbilical cord gets cut, exhale. Keeping the base of you relaxed. So you're more like this with the eyes closed. So it's as if we're recharging the storage battery in the base of us. It's subtle. But 
let the eyes flutter open. And just to give you the comparison, because this is our Tuesday class, so a lot of breath work, let's just go back to the thoracic breath and feel the difference, how it makes us feel around our body. So, sitting nice and tall, we're going to do a strong exhalation as if we're doing Kapalabhati. So, inhale, big breath to the top of the body, exhale, draw navel towards spine. Inhale, top of the body. Exhale, nose. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Wiping that snot on my leggings. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Building up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Over to you. Full breath in, exhale fully, and then close the eyes and feel the difference. It is very visceral on a physical level. There will be a tingling in the head, a bit like Kapalabhati, maybe tingling under the skin, and sort of a waking up of the system, a using up of energy, sending energy out, zing, 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 okay? Where our Howard breath is centering Drawing in, stabilizing, and energizing. Okay, enough talking, enough sitting. Let's get on with some vinyasa moving. Okay, on to backs. We're going to begin with how we finished yesterday with the twisting. Okay, so find yourself on the mat. Again, I reiterate this kind of breathwork yoga is the real deal. It's what we do a sanas for to be able to do that kind of yoga, not the other way around. Yeah, Lotus ain't gonna do bugger all for you. Breathing like that is gonna give you vitality and longevity. So down onto our backs, spine flush on the mat. Take the arms out into a T shape or cactusy. I like cactusy. It stops me letting my shoulders come off the mat. Lower spine flush to the mat. Let the heels dip in to start off with. Don't have to look at the camera, you kind of know this one. Take an inhale to begin. Exhale, knees over to the right. Into centre. Over to the left. Now keep those shoulders glued to the mat. Oh, I've stuck a load of blue tack over here. Inhale. They can move a bit, but not a lot. Control the breath and the movement and let the breath make the movement happen. I always say this one, let the breath instigate the movement, not the movement instigate the breath. In other words, let the breath begin before the movement starts. By a, by a soup song, by just a little bit. Now as we go from side to side, you'll feel that tone, not tension, and come back to the center. Raise the legs up towards the sky. Flex the feet, point the toes towards the face. Reach the fingertips up towards the toes. Reversing the breath today, we're gonna exhale to begin. Inhale as we lift up. Exhale, lower down. Sing at the tailbone and the shoulders up. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, lower the hips and the head down. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower down. One more. Inhale, lift. Hold here, exhale. Inhale, come down, bring knees in towards the chest. Oh, so nice. Good. Up. Comes back into cactus or t-shirt. This time, take the knees a little further away from you and get a bit of energy between the knees and the inner thighs. And we're going to rock side to side again. So, knees over to the right. And back to centre. Now, I didn't tell you what to do with your breath there because I want your breath to do whatever it wants in this twisty one. 
You may be inhaling on the way over or exhaling on the way over. All I would like is that as you do this, the movement itself comes about an inch or two below the navel and a couple of inches into you. And back to the center. Bring the knees in towards the chest, then in squeeze forehead towards the knees. Good. Release the head back down, cross ankles over, grab the toes or whatever's available to you. If you can, send the knees a little wide. Bring the legs up and take three rocks up to seated. Enjoy the metzalula feel of the spine. I get to use that good word. Come all the way up to see, we're not staying there, so I'm not going to move around, I'm going to be over here. Inhale, take the hands up to the skull. Exhale, twisting round to the right, but go from that hammer point. A couple of inches below the navel, twist from the lowest part of you. Inhale, take hands up to the sky, splice and dice by each other. Twist from the navel. Inhale, hands come back up to the sky. Take hold of tootsies. Arch in. We're going to roll on back. And we take three to roll back with a lovely spinal massage. Keep chin slightly tucked in to the chest. And see if you can take it slow. Roll all the way back. Take the legs up to the air. Grab the edges of your mat. Good. Settle. It would only be right that we put in a touch of Linda Loves It. Thank you very much, sir. A little, draw a little half moon, crescent moon. I hope you've all been popping to have a look at the sky while we've got less pollution out there. Crescent moon with Venus underneath it. It is romantic and an astral level. Nice little manoeuvre. Okay, so I hope my instruction is good so you don't have to look up. We're going to take the hands behind the back of the knees. Draw the forehead in towards the kneecaps. Little squeeze. Good. Take the head back down to the mat. Inhale, take the right leg up to the sky and take both hands down the crease of the left knee. And we're going to rock up into a balance. So you need to focus on to that centre point. So we inhale up into a balance. Knee towards chest, and you need to think about that lower centre point. Rock all the way down. We go again, rocking up, press out through the foot, and rock down. One more, rock up. It's going to take concentration. Somewhere deep, and rock down. Swap legs over, and the other leg, rock up, and rock down. And rock down. And rock up, and rock all the way down. Take the legs back up to the sky, bend the knees, knees in towards the chest. Good. Now we're going to do the same going into half boat pose. Legs up to the sky, rock up, half boat pose, and rock down. Rock up, half boat pose, and rock down. Now over to you to playfully do this, keeping your concentration, two inches below the label to keep you rooted in your hour. And if you can get your mind to focus on that place, you might find there's some stability in a little mini storm on the map. I'm traveling, I'm gonna go off camera if I'm not careful. Good. And then we'll come all the way up to seated, cross-legged after our fun game of find the hammer. <laughs> the things I can get people to do. Sit in nice and tall once more. Lengthen up the spine. Just take a little hand to the back of the spine and give it a little rub. Just in case you didn't met Saluna, you may have given the coccyx a bit of bashing. 
Good. Sit nice and tall. Inhale, take hands up towards the sky. Exhale, take prayer to the front of the head. Draw the elbows wide. We're going to go into the howler again. So, inhale, fill the body like a vessel. Exhale, sink the air down. The last place to contract is the lowest of the low belly. Inhale. Exhaling. And just for the psycho spiritual, keep breathing. Think about connecting this third eye, your intuition, to your gut feeling. Oh, if only we listen to our intuition a little bit more, hey? We all know it. We've all said, oh, I knew you were going to call, or I knew that was going to happen. If only we listen to ourselves. Inhale, take the hands up towards the sky. You're going to move on to all fours. Now we get on the move in the glue. So, spread the fingers onto all fours. It will start a little bit on the wrists. Spread the fingers, and I make no apologies for that. Spread the fingers nice and wide, root down. Inhale, arch your way forward. Heart between the arms and look forward. Exhale, curl under. But keep the lower belly hanging. Inhale to all fours in a neutral spine. Right, have a breath on all fours. I found this quite useful. Inhale, fill the belly, let it hang like a puppy dog belly. And as you exhale, exhale without contracting the lower belly. It's actually quite easy from here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Listen up, exhale. Now hold the breath. Keep holding your breath, keep holding your breath, keep holding your breath, keep holding your breath. And breathe. You should have felt your true core activating there. Okay, no more work on the wrist, thank you. Let's go down onto the forearms and take the hands to prayer with the thumbs facing up towards the face. Elbows are underneath the shoulders for this. We will be working our core, okay. Inhale, extend the right leg behind us. Keeping the toes pointing to the earth. Take the gaze forward, raise the heel, toe points down. Exhale, draw into the centre. Arch the spine and squeeze on in. Look to kiss the knee. Mwah. Inhale. Expand. Exhale. Draw in. Ready for this one? Inhale. Extend, exhale, stay there. Inhale. And your next exhale will go into dolphin on one leg. Exhale, press the leg up to the sky. Big, strong manoeuvre, and then all the way down onto the knees and rest for a second. Hmm? Hmm. Are we ready? Other side. Inhale, left leg goes out. Look forward. Exhale, curl in. Arch the spine. Inhale. Making the lungs like bellows. Exhale. Extend, it's always on the third. Inhale. Exhale, find steadiness. Press down through the forearms. Inhale. Exhale, press left leg to the sky, press through the forearms, stretch on up, toes pointing down, and all the way down to the mat. Very nice. Back onto all fours. Spread the fingers. Inhale, arch the spine. Exhale, we take down the dog now. Exhale. Inhale, right heel goes up to the sky. Good. Stay down the dog, but just bring the knee in towards the chest. Exhale. Knee in towards the chest. 
Keep gaze to the big left toe. Inhale, press heel to the sky, not toes. Exhale. You can always go back onto the forearms. Inhale, but that does make it tougher. As you exhale, take the heel towards the buttocks, stack the hips, and let the leg flop over to the left side of the mat. It's good. Take the foot back down to the mat, back to down the dog, back onto the knees if you please. Roll up through the spine, hands up towards the sky, casting at your wrist. Good. Very nice. Back down to all fours. We'll go head, heart, and hour for the day. Hands back down to the mat. Off we go into downward dog, so inhale, arch. Exhale, into downward dog. You know we're building up the wild thing on Friday, don't you? You do, you can see it coming, can't you? Inhale, left heel presses up towards the sky. Avoid a kick. Okay, then bring the knee in towards the chest, but move nothing else. Good. Inhale, extend heel, pressing to the sky. No kick, just press. Exhale. What's the word of the week? It's tone up tension. Inhale. Press the heel up, keeping that left hip floating. We bend the knee, heel towards buttocks, stack the hips, left knee goes high, let it flop all the way over. You can even dare a little look underneath the armpit. Hello. And when we're ready, all the way back to all fours. Up onto the knees, release, roll through the spine. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, drop them down. I've got so many ideas to go through with this. I love it when we get into the new groove on. Inhale, reach hands up towards the sky. Thank you for letting me drag you along this journey of discovery. Exhale, head, heart and hour. And down to the mat. Let us take a little bit of groove for the spine. Yes, let us do so. Spread the fingers nice and wide, building up on our arm strength. Inhale, right leg goes behind. Okay, take the gaze forward. And then we're going to lower down to the mat like so. Oh, oh, very nice. Both legs down to the mat. Hands in line with the nipples. Inhale up. Easy on the cobra itch. Exhale, rock back child's pose. We know this in the sequence. But we've got, you know, we're using the strength we built last week. Inhale, arch on three. Pressing into it, extending left leg. Keep the gaze forward, lower down to the mat. Cantilever from the hips. Roll on through, lift the heart, inhale, exhale back, child's pose, lovely. Inhale, into all fours, good, exhale, down with dog, ease on back, lovely. Right heel up to the sky, and we build. Options, stay with previous posture, or come into core plank, if you stay in previous posture, and there is a can grab the edges of the mat. It's a good one to do. Otherwise, we will go into this core plank feeling. Squeeze into that core plank, knee into the centre line. Inhale, leg up to the sky. Everybody does this. Bend the knee. Open out into the beginning of wild thing. And draw into the centre. Either bring knee to chest or walk forward, shin parallel to the earth. Inhale. Exhale. Back knee goes down. Step forward with the right leg. You can see a sequence building. I hope you can. I hope you can see where we go by the end of the week. Now, as we did yesterday, you can slump and splay into this pose. I would like you to release the back foot, the top of the foot, so on that. Ease the shoulders back. Hands are going to groove up to the sky. And we're going to be tucking that tailbone under. And we're thinking that inch or so below the navel in the centre is our strong point. Now, root into the centre and we're just going to take left hand down towards the mat and we're going to lean over. Keep that centre point strong. 
Inhale to centre. And the other arm. Roots down to reach to the side. Inhale. Up to centre. Exhale, hands go down onto the mat. Inhale into all fours or downward dog. Yeah? All fours or downward dog. If you've gone all fours, then join us in downward dog. Good manoeuvres. Okay, remember, choose the layer that suits you. Either grip the edges of the mat for wrist protection. Inhale, left leg up to the sky. Karma one, knee in towards chest. Karma two, we rock forward. Off we go. Inhale, open out the hip. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Where we are, back knee down, step the foot forward. Are we ready? Pressing in, release back foot. Inhale, hands come up to the sky. Tuck the tailbone under, root into that centre. Again, known as quite a few, you know, Tantien, Swadhisthana, the Hara, and then taking left hand, so right hand down towards the mat, but keep the other hand high. Inhale, hand up to the skull. And over to the other side. Inhale, hand up to the sky. Exhale, hands down to the mat. All fours, all top the toe under, straight into downward dog. Good. Knees go back down to the earth. And it's a Tuesday. Let's take child's pose. Yeah, let's just ease on inside the hands by the side of the body. Or if you wish, Jesse's prayer behind the back of the head. Jesse's prayer is always nice. It gives a nice bend to the elbows. We take the prayer behind the back of the head in child's pose. Let the dust settle. Let the flakes in your snow dome get to the bottom. Okay, from this position, come back to all fours. Are we going to go with the forearms back onto the mat? So we're layering up with a little bit more oomph in the hammer, okay? So, hands into prayer. Spread the fingers wide, elbows underneath the shoulders. We're on our knees, okay? So remember, it's tone, not tension. Tone, not tension. Take an inhale, press your tailbone towards the sky. Look to your fingertips. Exhale, dolphin pose. Take it up towards the sky, look towards the toes. Good, bring the feet together. Inhale, take right leg up to the sky. Exhale, bring the knee in towards the chest and take the gaze over the top of the fingers. Inhale, leg up to sky, press the heel up, square hips. Exhale, squeeze on in, skim the knee towards the mat. Inhale. Now, there is an option here, you can take the knee around the outside and squeeze it towards the elbow. Inhale. Exhale, foot down to earth, and then we walk into a plank, and then we lower down, rest the belly on the mat, two hands on top of each other, and place a little resting feeling there. So again, we're thinking about recharging, not using up, building up power. Slide the hands underneath the shoulders, draw the shoulders back, bring the inner thighs together, press the tops of the feet onto the mat. Inhale, press the chest off the mat, and maybe lift the thighs off the mat, but upward dog without it being placed into a vinyasa. Knees go back down onto the mat. 
ease back for one child's pose moment and back to do the left side four arms down hands to prayer fingers spread please let the prana flow to my yoga teacher told me okay let's see where we go with our how remember building up our physical spiritual and psychological strength so tuck toes under when we're ready tailbone up to the sky on an exhale inhale lefty leg raises hips nice and square exhale either the knee just comes in towards you and it hovers there inhale press the leg up to the sky or we take the plank all the way through forearm plank look over the top of the fingers Humphrey if you're here today I hope you're doing that one please inhale Exhale, draw it on in. Inhale. Exhale, draw it on in. Inhale, press towards the sky. Foot goes down. Either we stay here and look towards the mat, or we rock into that forearm plank. Then we stay with a little bit of steadiness here. And this is the one where you see if you can breathe into that harrow point. Low down to the mat. This time, take the arms wide, let them into a number 11 shape, draw the heart forward. Again, tits, teeth and tan, people. A little bit of neck releasing here. Just gently turn the head to the right. Inhale to the centre. To the left. Good. Inhale to the centre. And then, sandwich your hands on top of each other and take you for the rest there. Just in case, for the lower back, bend the legs and sway side to side. Oh, just lifting the crest of the hip off. Let that be a nice floppy, sloppy feeling. And make sure that crest of your hip comes off the mat as you do it. Just here and here. So we twist that low spine. I'm looking for some floppity floppities there. Knees bent, flop side to side. Good. Very nice. Inhale, take the hands underneath the shoulders, start lifting the chest, bring the toes together, strong on the toes. Now, I want you to power up that power place, yeah? Draw in, okay, as you feel where it is, and then relax it, just keep the tone there. On an inhale, we're gonna press up into up dog, Ura Mukhasvanasana. Never really given much credit this posture. It just sort of gets sandwiched in nowhere. And then we're going to rock back into downward dog. You can go by the knees if you please. Into our normal downward dog and settle on in. This lovely inversion. Two more long and lovely breaths here. Take the gaze forward. We're going to step the right leg through, straight between the hands. Help shimmy shake. We know how to do that. Building up in our hour, we're going to reach the arms forward. Guide them up to the sky. Okay, this is the last sort of strenuously, strenuously posture. Bend the back knee so the tailbone tucks. Sink on in. We're not going to go fists of fire. We're going to go fists to the center. So we're going to draw on in, bring the hands down smooth and easy, and we tip the tailbone to feel that center point of there's no fists. Inhale, guide up to the sky. Maybe a lengthening of the back leg if it feels nice. Exhale, bend the knee, tuck the tailbone under, and we draw into this central point. Inhale. 
Remember, tone, not tension. Building, bringing power in, not letting it out. It's like a solar panel charging up the power. Inhale. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Inhale, moment of steadiness. As we exhale, step it back into downward dog. And when we're ready, find your next breath. Let's do that left leg. Plonk it on through. Groove it onto the mat. Root down. As we rise on up, take the hands up towards the sky. Tilt the tailbone under by bending the knee. Go carefully if there's any twingy twenty in the knees. Raise back up a bit higher, okay? Fingertips together. And we draw in on the exhale and feel into that center. Inhale, extend the back leg a little straighter. Power monkeys get lower. So if you really want the power and you know the knees are safe, you get that back leg touching, the back knee touching the mat. Inhale. But please be aware of the knees. It only takes a little bit of misalignment and not pressing into the big toes to just tweak and twerk a bit of inflammation in the knees. Yeah, we all know what they're like. Draw in your power. Tone up. Good, 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 good. Feels right. Inhale. Hands down to the mat. Good, strong power moves. Inhale. Exhale. Down with dogs. Gonna feel lovely. Knees go down to the mat, but take them wide. Toes connect together and ease back into a nice, gentle child's pose. Roll the right ear towards the mat. Roll back to centre, third eye, and here, and the other. Inhale, back to that central position. Walk the fingers a little wide so you touch the edges of your mat. And take your concentration to where the third eye the heart, your heart center, and then your belly, your hara, pantien. And connect the head, the heart, and the hara. There's one big breath. Mind, body, soul. Inhale, glide yourself all the way onto all fours and then turn yourself around and come to sit on the buttocks. A nice rolling out of the spine, a little loosener of the hip flexors. Back to a little boat pose. So I want us to see how it feels now we've taken for all this period of time our focus into the hour and how it affects doing sort of our boat pose is the litmus test for it. Remember litmus paper, pink or blue? So, sit back, hands over the kneecaps, lean back to that place between the sitting bones and the coccyx. Lift the heart center up, and then tone into the hammer. So it's active, but not tense. Take the fingertips behind the knees. Bring the legs together. Lean back over the fulcrum of the hips. Shin bones come up. Release the hands. And let's go into that kind of bin again. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale. 
exhale. Inhale, take the hands up to the sky. Exhale. Should we really shake the shoulder happening? Inhale. And exhale, roll down, knees in towards the chest. Mm. Gotta be right because it feels good. Bring the forehead towards the knees. Little counter pose, please. Heels as close as you can to your buttocks. Now, if you felt any twang in our high and low lunges, yeah, just tilt your pelvis here. Don't lift the weight up. Otherwise, reach the hands out to grip the edges of your mats. Inhale, just lift the pubic bone up towards the sky. Go gentle and subtle. There may be a little tenderness. Let the knees magnetize, magneto towards one another. And from this inversion, I want you to imagine that, don't have to imagine it's actually happening, that your, your internal organs are getting an, an opposite effect of gravity. They're going to sit back in the space where they should naturally be. And we're going to go into that sort of power, lower body breath, Japanese style. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, fill. Exhale. Now hold. Inhale again, and then lower back down to the mat. Nice and slow. Good. We're going to finish off as we began. Bring the knees towards you. We're just going to take the knees from side to side. Breath is over to you. Shoulders stay rooted. Dip one side. Come back to centre. And dip the other. Now, options available. Bring the knees close to the chest for lower back release. So you can scooch the knees in, take the tailbone off. And then take it to the other side and press the knees away a little. Or, if you want to keep with that Hara Tantien feeling, you take the knees over the top where the hips are. And there you get a little bit more juice. A little bit of more charge up. Flow with your breath, walk side to side, ticking and a top kink. Perfect. Magnificent. And finally, guide your legs up to the sky. This time you can think about pressing the heels up and the toes towards you. A little rub of the hamstrings at the back of the legs. Just for good measure, last one to finish off on a slightly deeper twist. Soles of the feet onto the mat, lift the hips, shove them a little bit over to the lefty. Legs back up to the sky. Cross left leg over right leg, bend the knees, so garunda the legs and take the knees over to the right. So you're stacking onto the right hip. Now, just breathe this over. If we're in a live class, I'd come round and put my hand on your shoulder to hold that left shoulder into the air. So you can just do that yourself. And let gravity take the knees across as far as they need to go. 
Am I not touching the ground today? Tense body. Bring back to center. Unfold the legs in the best possible taste. And then feet down to the mat. Lift hips over to the right side. Legs go up. Cross the right leg over left leg. You know the score. Both knees drop over to the left. But take your time. Don't rush this. Always have the option of backing away and grooving back in. Make small adjustments because sometimes it can take the smallest manoeuvre. Hey, if you've been to an osteopath or a chiropractor, sometimes the smallest movements have the biggest intensity. And it's the same when we're our own chiropractors, our own physiotherapists, because that's what we're doing. Breath is slowing right down there. One more big, beautiful breath. Bring it back to centre. Unfold the legs. Knees in towards the chest. Oh. And it is that time. And our second class of taking the crown to the centre, extending the legs towards the edges of the mat, grab the dog, grab the child, grab the blanket. Depending where you're on the world or your financial situation, the gardener or the chef, I don't know, I don't judge, it's over to you. Or the au pair, let's not be sexist, I mean, you know. Not appropriate, Hazel, not appropriate. Grab something like a blanket, a lot safer. And then, settle. Settle the dust. Now, silly jokes aside, this is one of those sneaky classes. It's a sneaky class that's going to sneak up on you and only when you come to this place of stillness can you feel and be aware of how this should have made you feel. You should feel like you've done something, but you should feel very present in the moment, very present in your body. What does that mean, aware of your body? Feel yourself grounded into the earth. And now pay attention to the points of your body that are in contact with the earth. As a creature, we're very forward thinking. Everything is in the front of us. We don't have monocular vision like a horse or you know, 360 like an owl. As a human being, we are designed to look forward. So I'm inviting you to come in and look inwards. I like the statement, sitting in the back of your own being, at the back of the mind, to the back of the body. Sink in, drop down, tune in, turn off. Make the exhalations a little bit longer than normal. All external desires. Release them in this moment. Come to notice how you feel. Draw in a sense of stability, of concentration on the breath.
find where the sound ends and the silence begins. Then exist in that moment. For there you will find your secret centre of being. The perfect place of peace within yourself. An ocean of peace lives within you. The space between the inhale and the exhale and the exhale and the inhale. Because when we take our yoga practice like today, with all the craziness around us, all the instability, when we find our centre and we honour ourselves as I choose to honour all of you today for taking this journey. The real beauty comes from within, not the things we grab externally to give us a moment of pleasure. The difference between seeing a flower and picking it to keep and seeing a flower on a plant and watering it so it may thrive. Everything you require is in the centre of you. And I'm going to leave you today for your five breaths into the centre, the samadhi, the concentration. I wish you all a centred, grounded embodiment. Namaste.